Abid. Hi, Abid. I don't think you hear me. Hi, Marcia. It's been a long time. I know. How are you? I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. Good to it's, see you. I'm excited to hear you talk tonight. Well, um, I'm excited, you know, to see you all after this these years, you know, away from ISU, you know. It's kind of you get these emotions and remembering all all the the college life up there you know uh, well good luck tonight yep thank you one more minute left <laughs> and then i'm gonna start Okay, let's start. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well today. Thank you for joining us. My name is Duam Libari. I am an international grad student at Indiana State University. I'm from Saudi Arabia. I also I serve as a graduate assistant for the International Student Resource Center in the Office of Multicultural Service and Program. Our research center support and promote the success and personal growth of international students through inter intercultural programming and advocacy. So today, power on a spotlight and ISU inspiring alumni to learn from his experience and to get uh, motivated as well. Before we start, I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read this um, land acknowledgement statement. It's a formal statement that recognize and respect indigenous people as a traditional steward of this land and the enduring relationship that exists between indigenous people and their traditional territories. Also, as you see in the right side, uh, this landmark, it's located here in Terre Haute um, in uh, Firebanks Park. So it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, who is going to talk to us about his journey as an international student at United States University, at United States. We should all be deeply interested because it's by a person who has been through many things during his life to reach his dream and shape his future vision. Our speaker having spent almost his first education pathways here at Indiana State University. He got the bachelor degree in electronics engineering and uh, the master degree in electronics and computer engineering from Indiana State University. He did, he did not stop there. He continued to reach his high ed level of education from diff different universities. Our guest speaker for today, know him for his positive and motivational attitude towards his student and instructors and family and friends. He become expert in advising many on their educational and career opportunities in av aviation science fields. And he joined being educated and educating others. Please join me in welcoming Captain Abid al Well, uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Dua, for the great um, introduction that you gave about me. Uh, well, um, 
she she said uh, whatever uh she has to say and you know uh, i was one of proud students at Indiana State University starting my bachelor degree and my master also degree with creating family and friends and uh, professors. So uh, hopefully uh, we will start and talk about the hardships like every student got a hardship, every person in life you get, you go through hardships. But remember that um, I would start by saying that not just because it took you longer to get to your point that that doesn't mean you fail. So you continue doing what you're doing and at the end of the day, you will get to the point as long as you continue. So uh, I will start by uh, talking about myself um, just in general life. I will share the screen with you. I'm happy today, you know, to be, to get back to Indiana State University as a speaker as someone had experience at the, the, at the Indiana State University with the culture, with the multicultural, with international students and local students and students from different places from the United States. It kind of got me back, got me back to my thinking, got me back to my, you know, uh, beautiful moments, beautiful people who, who I met over there beautiful professors who provide help always. Uh, as a young person, you go to school. I'm just talking now about Indiana State University past, okay? I'm just reminding myself about these emotions, moments, and these good moments in my life. So you'll get people uh, who help you. You get professors who help you like take time, contacting you, knowing about your issues in a college life. So, so when I left Indiana State University, it got me in mixed feeling, got me like mixed feeling, happy and sad. Like I'm gonna leave and I don't wanna leave, you know, but I had to do it. Jump up, I had to go to the next level of my life. So hopefully um, I'm an international student as um, I said, I'm an international student who got into the United States 10 years ago. Well, sadly, it will be like 10 years ago, being away from your family and being alone. So that's, uh, that's, that's, that's alone, that's one big thing. Like being alone in different culture, you experience loneliness, you go through sickness, you get sick, you get up in your feet, you, you, get, you meet financial problems, you kind of looking for help, asking professors, getting some friends, staying alone, all these things, like uh, any person got a gift in his life. If you got a gift in your life, you can transfer that gift to a power that to empower you doing more for yourself, for your family, for your society, for your country, and for the world. You never un underestimate yourself as a, as, a, as a person. So hopefully uh, I was in Saudi Arabia well, 11 years, 12 years before I know, uh, uh, before I know Martha, before I know India, there is something called Indiana State University, before I know there is something called Sycamore. Uh, starting in my culture in Saudi Arabia, it's kind of really different, really different, different, big difference, a lot of differences from Saudi Arabia and the United States. Starting as a young, as a young person, as a young, guy you know dreaming and playing and you know just going to high school so i will start talking about my early life and how did i start in my culture how did i get values how do i i learn from my mom how do i learn from my family how do i learn uh how to communicate with people and make make this thing like make me respect other people so they respect you back and then you kind of get in best uh the best people around you you, you kind of taught you how how you gonna how you gonna how you gonna how you gonna help yourself through life you know that everyone as i was saying everyone has his own hardship so um i do remember what master said in 2015 when i graduated but i i figured out something 
that she was saying that, well, everyone get, get a hardship. She was talking about hardships. I don't remember it. And I don't want to say it. She's going to say it maybe at the end of this, uh, in this conference. So uh, this, is, this is my start. Well, when you come to start, when it comes about my early age, I'm, I'm doing a PowerPoint. I, I, I believe you guys seen the, the screen, right? So the early age, as, as a person, how do you get adapt with life? How do you get adapt with life? Like friends, family, and high school, and college, and job. So I went through all these things, and I believe every person will go through all these things. You will have friends. If you are, well, if you are 17 years old, you will have friends. You'll have family. You'll have high school. You'll have college. Then you will have a job. So in Saudi Arabia as a culture, if you get a job, well, Martha, sadly, you will get married and you're gonna start your life and start getting big responsibility. Of, and of course, that's gonna make you a responsible person, thinking about all these things. Starting by friends, picking up friends. How do you pick your friends? I always choose people who think outside the box, people who fix problems, people who even if they meet any problem, they try to fix it. They ask, they, they look for help. And of course, my family support. So when I get to high school, I was just thinking just to finish high school. If I tell you something that you guys would never believe, I was saying, I don't want to learn English. It's not my language. I'm not going to use it. And uh, to tell you the truth, that, that's the truth. When I get to the college, I went to College of Technology in Mecca. Just to get a, you know, just I don't want to stay home. And, you know, I don't want to stay home. And kind of like my mom looking at me, all my brothers and sisters getting education, but I'm sitting home. So I went there for an associate degree in electrical power, electric technician. After graduating from there, I got a job and it was at that time, you know, getting salary about $2,000, you happy, you know, and you're young, you don't have any responsibility, you don't think about anything, just spending that money and, you know, having fun in your life. It's kind of, you don't, you don't think. So I started the job at Saudi Electric Company and during the job, I worked there for seven months. During the job, I was the youngest person in that power station. So it kind of got my attention that I was the youngest person. I was like, how are you gonna continue your life at this point? Like, are you gonna improve yourself? Are you gonna change? Uh, what is gonna happen? So I kept asking myself questions. So I always get, a, I always get, a, get some people to ask, always ask. You know, if, if you guys go to Indiana State University, go just write Martha Reed in Google. You will find her office and her phone number and her email. So you, you kind of, yeah, I was looking for the help. I asked my supervisor, I said, hey, uh, how long have you been working here? He goes like, uh, okay, uh, why are you asking me this question? Are you asking me because of the salary? Because we, we were young. We think about the money that we get. We, we don't think about anything. And I was telling you it's different culture, guys. So I asked him, he said, I've been working about 20 years right now. I was like, what is your educational level? He got, guess what? He got the same associate degree I got. And then I start asking, like, you know, is, are they going to increase my incomes? Are they going to increase my salaries? So <laughs> basically his answer was, well, you guys, they're going to increase it. But by the time you get to my level, you will be a supervisor. Okay. I went home. I slipped on it. I didn't like it. Although other people, my friends were saying, oh my God, this guy got a job. You're lucky. I slipped on it. I kept thinking. Six months later, I stopped working. I stopped working. I start, I start thinking of coming to the United States. 
if you guys remember, I just told you that I don't want to, I didn't want to learn English. Mm, how are you going to go to the United States then? So it was the change point of my life, leaving that job. About four months, I lived that job four months. I didn't have a job. Well, of course, you guys know Saudi Arabia. Maybe you know Saudi Arabia that you get a family support. You wake you find about you find about fifty dollars on on your on your you know bed. Well, your mom because she got, she got a mom heart. She she want to support you. She says like, why do you leave your job? Said I got something to do, mom. I got a lot of things to do. She didn't say anything. I just looked her in the eye. You see sad moments, but at that point, I said I have to do something. I left that job because I am from Mecca. I didn't tell anybody well, when, when, when I introduced myself, but you guys saw Mecca picture on the post when, 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 when Indiana State University put it in there. So I'm from Mecca. It's so windy, so um, I hope you guys don't hear this. So it's so windy. You guys in Tiro, I'm in Illinois. So I left the job. I start trying to create a new job for myself. How are you gonna do it? How are you gonna do it? How are you gonna do it? I start as a contract company, small company as a contract in a, in a month that annual, annual, annual hedge happen like every year. I start doing it. I start be like, oh, it's my own company, but you know, it's not on my name. I'm paying other stuff to get that job. Then after that, it became like financial stability. I finished the Hajj done. Okay, the Hajj is finished. So what are you gonna do? I found that I had about I I'm not going to say about one hundred thousand dollars, but it's about sixty five, seventy five thousand dollars. So I got the stability now. Now I got to plan. I got a plan. I got a plan for something. I contacted the schools. I contacted some people in Denver, Colorado. My brother was here. I was lucky. So uh, I contacted with him. I got acceptance from English school. I came to the United States. I had no English, guys. All right. So I start doing my plan. I start doing it, not just making my plan. I start the actions. I got to the United States. DC stayed there 10 days. After these 10 days, I went to Denver, Colorado. And then by the time you get, uh, by the time we got here, like it was like a scholarship. If you're from Saudi Arabia, the government will provide you a scholarship, like fully funded. You know, they pay your tuition, they give you a salary, like every month, you know, life is good. You just study and make something, make, make yourself better. I went to that English school. What happened is I finished starting, starting my, my university. Now is the hard time, right? Look, the first step, trying to, to, to improve my, my, my thinking, trying to, imp to develop myself, trying to be a stable person, trying to be like I was thinking that, oh, I'm in this country. I'm not coming here to do this and that, but I'm in this country to make a change, not only to myself, but also to my family and my country. So never underestimate yourself. I believe the strongest grace that we get from God is the human mind. If you got mine, I mean, use it. Hey, I'll tell you what, some of you got talent. Some of you got gifts. Some of you have a lot of money, right? Well, I, I'm not saying it's not yours, but maybe your mom and dad, you get a support, man. I'm telling you, but hey, I had no support. A lot of problems pops up in my life. Try to become over it. I start thinking, start thinking to develop my thinking. How, how am I going to think? How am I going to do this and that? I went to uh, University of Colorado, Denver. I started engineering. 
I start, you know, not making a lot of friends, you know, just being alone and go to school trying to be an A student. Suddenly, everyone knows me. I'm not saying like everyone about the school, but every every Saudi in there, they know me. How? I don't know. First semester, I got my uh, dean list in the College of Engineering in Colorado. So I was saying, what is the best for me, right? So you got to do what's the best for you. And I found out that the, the thing for me is, um, the best thing for me is, you know, just be here. I was dreaming to be an engineer. Now we will, we will come to the piloting stuff. We will come to aviation stuff. So I took an action. I start working on it. Start working in a school. Go down, get up, get on your feet, go to school. You meet financial problem, hard, educational life, difficulties in language. Not easy changing the culture, being alone, away from your family, you know. I'm not saying that I'm the only person did it. A lot of people did it. But each one got a plate. And hey, I'm telling you, man, you don't want to try my plate. You don't want to try my plate. It's really hardship. A lot of things are hard. Now, how did I, I get got all these things? I took the decision to continue my education, came to the United States, got the adoption, got into American culture. If you look on the side, on the slide, you see a picture. That's one of the national days. It was in 2011. I was dancing. That's the traditional dancing in my city. We call it Muzmar. I know some of you guys. Well, this tradition, people just, you know, dance with a stick and, you know, they got their own drums, own tradition. They got low, how you gonna dance, got who's gonna be, be in there. So it's a beautiful thing. I made a conference in 2011, not in 2012, in University of uh, Westminster in Colorado. They were asking about this. They say, why are you guys wearing something on your head? So I start saying, oh my God, my American friends, you guys don't know this? Of course they don't know. You came from different culture and you trying to wear some stuff are different. So I start talking about it. I said, <coughs> well, people used to, used to like in like in a history a long time ago they don't have weapons right so people in Mecca used to have stick, sticks like in their hands they put something in their head you fight with somebody you know you get in war I'm not trying to make you fight but I'm just fight about your dream that's what you want to fight about so uh, they put something in their head to protect their heads and each one have have different style to do it. And the way how you're going to make that stick attached to your hands. It's really good traditional. So I start talking about it. I took the decision, studied language, English language. About six months, I tell you a story, little bit, little story. When I got to the United States, it was Denver, Colorado airport. It was a big airport. I was lost between the gates for two hours. Just walking, trying to get out to the terminal and get my bags. My brother is outside. But hey, it was, it was, it was, I was tired. I was like, oh my God, why do I got here? Why do I got here? Walking between the gates, trying just to get out. Guess what? I was shy to ask some people. Even if I don't know English, I can make move as people will understand. Or if you think about it, just follow people. They get you outside. But I didn't do it. I was afraid. I was scared. It's a new, something new. You, you look at people. You see them smiling. Well, hey, you look at girls. You see them smiling. You go like, oh, hmm, I'm looking good, you know? It's, it's just different culture. 
you know, oh, I'm looking good. Why this girl is smiling? Why is that one is smiling? Why this one is smiling? And then you get like kind of in your mind, you get like, oh, mm, I'm looking good, you know? And you are tired, flowing for 14 hours. It's just different culture. So after two hours, I met a guy. I said, bag, bag. I start using Google translation. I said, bag, bag. He said, you need a bag? I said, bag out. You know, I tried. I tried my best. And finally, I'm finally, you know, got me to the terminal. And what, what, what's funny is he was with me. He got me into the train until I got my bags, until I got my stuff. And then he said, hey, good luck, man. And then I start picking up, start getting adaption with, with the language. Now we watch movies. Well, oh, I remember. Movies. Oh, we see Hollywood. We think like, oh, we see, we see guns. We think like, oh, all Americans, they have guns. That's what I thought. So third day in, in the United States, didn't go to the English school yet. I was walking in the street. I saw a homeless guy, you know, just holding some cup and he was like, change, change. I was like, oh my gosh, this guy has a gun. Let me run. It's really funny, guys. But these things, I'm not going to say are major, but these are the keys that make me learn. Even I smoke cigarettes, okay, which is a bad habit. I went to the gas station to buy cigarettes. I bought the cigarettes. I didn't know how to explain it, but it's kind of, he is a cool guy. You know, he used sign language. I don't know. I didn't know what I used, but I got the cigarette. The problem was the lighter. How am I gonna get this lighter? I don't know, I couldn't say lighter, I couldn't say it. Even if you go and Google Translate, it give you something else. So I tried, I tried, and then I spent about eight minutes, you know, standing in front of the guy, and he goes like, hey, are you gonna pay or not? I took one cigarette, I put it in my mouth. He said, hey, no, no, we are in a gas station. This is not a law. You can't do this. And then I start doing. And he goes like, what do you need, man? I will start doing this. What do you need, man? And then I put the cigarette again in my mouth. And then I, I go like, and then he goes like, oh my God, you got to say it lighter. When he said that, I understood. So that word, I didn't learn it from school. I learned it from this guy. So this is how you're gonna understand, how you're gonna use these major keys, how you're gonna use the adaption, getting in life with, with, with other people, getting in life with American cultures. Oh, not just because you see any girl is smiling at you, that means, oh, you are the sexiest guy ever, right? That's what I was thinking. All the smiling. Then I started smiling too. So if I see you smile and I smile back, well, that's nice. That's what it is. So after this, uh, after this, uh, this thing, like, you know, the college life, as I was saying, you know, want to be an engineer, Colorado, Denver, you know, going to school, not talking to a lot of people, acting like the smart guy, like, you know, hmm, I feel like this guy is in my mind. Hmm. This guy is going to use me. He make me study and then I come and explain things to him. Hmm. First semester went away, done, got the dean list. Every Saudi in the university, they know me. I was like, oh my God. Then almost done with the first year, the second semester, we made a an, uh, an not education, educational cultural about Saudi Arabia and there were five universities involved. And guess what? I was the speaker. The sad moment happened, but I was the speaker. A lot of companies from Saudi Arabia came to get all these people who had a scholarship at that time. And they were looking at me like, oh my God, this guy, this guy just have been here a year or eight months. How could he speak like that? I was like, well, if you need something, you got to work for it, right? 
start reading news, like, I don't know, I, I read just everything I read, even if I didn't understand. I spent six months in English school, only six months. I couldn't believe it myself, but I remembered, oh my gosh, lighter. That's what I remember. It was a key of the communication. After that conference happened, finished, I got to my lowest point. Everyone, as I was saying, got a hardships, right? Well, I tell you what, after one month of that conference, I used to be a big guy going to the gym, working out, you know, smiling all the girls, smiling at them. I started smiling. I became like, oh, hi, you know, smile, just a smile. It just makes you feel comfortable, you know, makes you a person. After a month after that, a big problem happened. I start losing my weight. I start becoming a weak. I go to the gym, I work out, I can't. I cannot do anything. It was really hard. I start reading about the symptoms that I feel, feeling some strange stuff, different thing. I'm not normal. Well, I start noticing some stuff that, oh, it might be something dangerous. Oh, it might be something dangerous. And then I kind of, oh, skip it. Let me go to the hospital. Hey doc, um, I'm feeling, I'm, I don't feel good, you know? I never asked them to do a blood draw, never asked them. But the big part, the big problem is I was changing my apartment. Well, in America, it's not in, like Saudi Arabia, guys. Well, you got some people to carry your stuff, you know, your clothes, your whatever. No, you do everything by yourself. You got to be independent. You got to be strong. So I was weak. As I was telling you, at lowest point, feeling strange symptoms, feeling strange things happening in my body. As I was reading, one night, I had my sister and my brother, same apartment. Well, not my brother, not my brother, just a sister, same apartment. I start reading at night and then I find out I was, it was really cold. If you guys know, Colorado is really cold. I was in Denver. And then uh, my room was at the balcony. I opened up that door. I slept naked. I covered myself. 25 or 20 minutes, guys, I slept, but I wake up, all my body was water. I was sweating. It was really cold. This sign, I was like, oh my God, you're gonna die, man. Take my phone away again, start reading, start reading, start calling hospitals in the morning. Guess what? I went to the doc, to one doctor. I said, hey, you guys have a walk-in appointment? They said, yes. I came in, you know, blood drawn and stuff. What symptoms? I said, when I brush my teeth, I see blood. The doctor said, well, it happens to normal people. I said, no, I don't see normal blood. I was bleeding from my teeth. I take care of my teeth always. I like my teeth, but at that time, the doctor recognized that I have a big problem. So he said, well, uh, we'll do the blood draw now. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. And then we, we come and talk. I said, hey doc, I'm, I'm losing weight. I'm, I'm, you know, I was 71 kilogram and right now I'm, I'm, I'm about 62. If you see my face, you wouldn't know me. So the doctor came back, he said, well, unfortunately, Abed, uh, we, I'm, I gotta tell you something. You have leukemia. Well, I thought I knew English when he said leukemia. I thought I knew it. I said, okay, uh, so are you gonna give me pills? Um, you know, I'm ready to go home. 
He goes like, no, you can't. You know what's leukemia? I said, no, sir. He, got, he goes like, it's a type of cancer. Now, if you don't know cancer in Saudi Arabia, if we heard cancer, that means death. That means, oh, you're going to the grave soon. So he told me that, well, it's type of cancer. I said, what type of cancer? He goes like, it's a blood cancer. I said, doc, it's not, look, doctor, I said, it's not my blood. I feel like you guys mixed in up something. He, he said, he said, I understand, you know, your feelings. I understand how you're going to do this stuff. I, I didn't know how to tell my family. I didn't know how to call my sister and tell her. I didn't know what to do at that time. So the funny thing is the doctor, I told him that I'm going up. I, I want to go out. He said, no, he cannot. He put one of the security guys like outside. So when he put these securities outside, I thought like, I, I was like, let me play games. I just want to be out of that hospital. You know, I just want to be out of that place. I go like, okay. And then I told the security guy, you know what? I want to go to my car and, and, and get something. He goes like, sir, I have orders. You blood uh, labs will come soon. It's only, it takes only 45 minutes. They brought the labs and the doctor came again. He said, okay, look, man. He said, look, young man, I tell you what, it seems like you don't know what cancer is. I said, well, cancer means death. He said, no, it's not. You could be strong. We treated, we studied, we went to school. We had a good record at the hospital. I said, okay, what is gonna happen right now? I said, he said, well, we're gonna start treatment. Your blood all white, the white blood cells. So he showed me the tube of the blood. I'm not saying it's, it's gonna be like milk, white, no. But when I looked on the top, top of it, it was all white. He said, this is your white blood cells in your body starting to attack you. And this is why we call it cancer. And we need to take care of it right now. You might, if you get out, if you, maybe you might have 48 hours and then you die. I said, okay, doctor, I just need one thing. I just want to go to my car. I went to my car. I don't know why I did this, but Sometimes it happened because I was at my lowest point, you know, feeling depressed away from your family. You don't know how you're gonna tell your mom this kind of, of problem and how you're gonna deal with it. And how oh, you have a scholarship, you go into school, you live alone, you wanna make your family proud. I went to my car. I smoked cigarettes, the whole pack, it's 20 cigarettes. I smoked them at the same time and crying. No one sees me, but I, hey, I'm telling you. That's why I was saying, you don't wanna try my plate. Everybody get, get hardships. So I went back to the hospital. The doctor uh, said, okay, I bet, are you ready? I said, yes, doctor, I'm ready. Whatever you wanna do. But if I'm going to die, you got to tell me. <laughs> he started laughing and he said, no, I feel like you are very, you are strong. You are a strong man. And they gave me a bottle that I drink. I don't know what it, I don't know what it was, but it has alcohol on it. I feel, I feel really like, I feel really happy. You know, I feel, I feel like I'm flying back to Saudi Arabia at that moment, but they put me in a, some devices, they put me in RMI, whatever, like, you know, they're checking me out. So they find, um, they found out nothing happened in my body unless the blood went all white blood cells. So they say, okay, we'll start the chemotherapy. I was asleep and I didn't wake up until maybe 48 hours, maybe three days. I wake up after three days, I find myself, my clothes, got really small on me. My body became really big. 
I felt it. I just wake up and then I go like this with my beard. It comes out of my hands. I get a bottle of the water. I read the, 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 the ingredients of that bottle, the things that are inside. If I drink it, I feel them in my throat. And then they said, okay, I bet you finish. We get you seven plus three. I was like, what is seven plus three, man? What did you do to me? I look like Hamza Idris right now. That's, that's, that's an international player in our country. And then they go like, well, this is, and you pass it. That's really great. Your body reactions and the stuff. I was like, okay, how, how long am I going to stay here? They say 40 days. I said, okay. I stayed 40 days. They start, you know, saying, hey, your immune system is not okay. You can't be it with people. You can't be, you know, so I start thinking, how am I going to adapt my school with my cancer stuff, cancer treatment? And the, the clinic wants me to be there every day, every single day from seven to nine to finish. And then I go to school. I don't want to be with, with people in a class, more than 50 people. And everyone touched me. I washed my hands. So I was like social distancing, right? Not because of coronavirus or COVID-19 but I knew it because the doctor told me that, hey, a kid, a kid could kill you. So you gotta be careful. I said, okay, doctor, he goes like, you cannot eat fruit. You cannot eat vegetables. You can't eat anything that uncooked. So I start eating cheese and bread, you know, sorry for this air, you know, it's really windy outside. So I start, eating bread, well, guess what? Maybe for one year, it's bread and, and cheese. And then I, my thinking, like I start growing up. I was like, okay, how are you gonna deal with your life now? How are you gonna deal with your life now? At that point, it was the doors that opened for me, Indiana State University. I had to change the school because, I had to change from University of Colorado because, well, <coughs> excuse me, Indiana State University. I, I didn't know anybody over there. I was like, okay, that's great. Well, no Saudis, they don't know me. Well, guess what? I came to Indianapolis, got into the car, boom, to Turao. Got into a hotel, then um, my brother, and then like I came to the technology building. Guess what? I saw a lot of Saudis. I was like, oh my God, I'm running from you guys. Find you here. So at that time, I'm, um, I'm do still doing treatment. So I transferred my treatment to uh, uh, Indiana Hospital in Indianapolis. And the doctor wants to see me like every two weeks once. So I came, you know, finished my undergrad. It was in 2015. I graduated from ISU with bachelor in electronics as do the same. And then um, at that time, we had a, if you finish your bachelor, you will get your master that you could, you know, upgrade your scholarship, but I wasn't lucky. But when I was in my engineering program at Indiana State, I remember Dr. I remember Dr. Marian Schaffer. I remember a lot of professors over there who, who provide the help. So I don't tell, I tell certain people about my situation. I say, hey, professor, uh, uh, I don't think I'm good to be with 50 people. So if you see me sitting on the corner of the class, please just know this is, you know, um, um, I'm a cancer patient. I did a transplant. I didn't say it, but I did a bone marrow transplant, guys. I did a bone marrow transplant. I had a hard time to find somebody to, to, to be a match, you know, I had a hard time, really. But at the end, I find my brother, you know, he was my donor and, uh, and things were, were really fine. So I started growing up and then the change happened. I graduated with, from ISU. When I was sick, I take maybe around 20 pills in the morning and 20 pills at night. And I have to drink I'm not going to say a number, but I have to drink a lot of water. And every time they go like, keep yourself hydrated, keep yourself hydrated. Hey, I bet you're taking a lot of medications, my doctor, you know. 
you're taking a lot of meds. You need to drink water. I said, how, how many bottles? Like 24, 48? He was like, whatever you can drink, just take care of yourself. We do the, the bone marrow transplant. We don't want to, the cells that we put in your body attack your body again. And you will get something called graft host disease. I was like, oh my God, doc, you know, you got me out of cancer. Now you saying something else will happen. So I start reading about, you know, bone marrow transplant. I start about blood sicknesses, you know, blood cancers, blood, you know, I became really not emotional, but when I sleep, I dream that I'm flying. Well, guess what? I just lift up my body. You see me above your house. I'm flying and dreaming. It happens to me like every, like, uh, well, I, I, I'm not going to say uh, about six months, but it happens to me maybe one month, a day after one. I didn't know what it is. I tried to ask people, but I didn't. I didn't know that I'm going to be a pilot. Well, pilot stuff, will, 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 I'll tell you. So I graduated. I already have my acceptance. And guess what? Saudi Arabia said, well, hey, no scholarship anymore. You got to get back. We need you to work here. And that was like, I got my acceptance. I had a good relationship with my professors. Really nice people, helpful, smart, powerful. I was like, okay, I can do it. I will do it. Bam, start summer 2015. And guess what? Because I was dreaming that I'm flying with my buddy, not airplanes, not airplanes. I don't know anything about planes at that time. So I went to Dr. Marion. Marion, I told him, I said, hey, look, professor, um, I'm trying to be, a, uh, I think I'm, I wanna be a pilot. He was like, really? You're a smart guy, you're a smart engineer. I said, well, my major project is, is about, about the stuff that the technologies that we use. I, I wanna create something, you know, that help people. He was like, what do you wanna create, I bet? I said, okay, professor, don't make fun of me, but I'm, I'm, I'm really serious. I'm trying to fly. He was like, what are you going to fly? I was like, not airplanes, but my buddy, because I saw it in my dreams. And Dr. Silver said, okay, Abed, I believe that you're gonna, maybe you wanna be a pilot. He just put that into my mind. I went home at the second week. I did my TSA clearance. I did all my stuff. I start flying. Three months later, I'm private pilot. Other three months later, I'm, I'm pilot. I got the second license. Well, I didn't think about airlines job, never. I graduated in 2016 from Indiana State University. So what happened, I had my instrument license. Now you might be thinking that, oh, how did you pay if you didn't have a scholarship? Well, you gotta be an independent person. You gotta get the help. You gotta go to international uh, services. They're gonna help you. You got to work. So I spend the time between a school and flying and working with the help of my professors. Then when I graduated, I was like, okay, I don't want to be engineer anymore. Even if I had master's degree, well, I just want to fly. I had two licenses. I was like, I just want to fly airplanes. And John McKinney said, this is my instructor, first person who taught me flying in Terre Haute, Indiana. We got into the plane, I came, I have a lot of notebooks. I thought like I'm going to study maybe about one year in the ground. I said, okay, uh, okay, captain, um, what's up? He goes like, I bet on the airplane. I said, right now? He said, right now. Guess what? I got into the plane. Well, I didn't know anything, believe me. I didn't know anything. I just know that the seat named seat. Otherwise, I don't know anything. Well, of course I drive cars. So we got into the ground. He goes like, I bet push this. I said, what is this? He goes like, this is called throttle. 
I start processing, information processing my mind. I put the power in, the plane was sliding, right, left. He goes like, use your feet. Well, I was using my feet, but it was really aggressively. I went away from the runway, he got me back. We, 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 turned, we, we went up above Indiana State University, above the school, we were flying. And he goes like, I bet I will show you something called the stall. I said, what, what is it? He goes like, the plane, when you go up, you know, it will lose the lift. So you will feel like you dropping yourself, you going down. I was like, okay, let's do it. He did it. I was really scared. I was like, Captain, look, I had cancer before, man. I didn't die. I don't want to die in planes. And he goes like, okay, well, I bet you are a survivor, but it's going to cost you a lot to fly. Do you have money? I said, no, sir. He goes, well, it's going to cost you a lot to fly. I thought you brave a bit. I said, you know what? You're brave, right? You got a brave heart. I said, you know what? Let's do it again. So first time I closed my eyes. Second time, only one eye. Third time I opened my eyes, but I was shaking. All my body was shaking. I was scared, really. We went back three months later, you know, six months. I got my, my instrument license. I, you know, when you graduate in, in the United States, you can, uh, when you graduate, you know, you cannot stay in the United States legally unless you get a 60 days, all these things about international students. So I had to change the school. I paid all the tuition, like out of my pocket. I paid all the tuition for flying out of my pocket. Don't ask me how, because I've never thought how much it is. There is always a plan for that. Well, tuition, if it's 30,000 for your master's degree, well, you're not going to pay all the 30,000. I believe Doa and Martha know that. You didn't have all the amount. It's not working like that way. Well, you could come and put payment plan to get to the end. Just get the payment plan. They don't care if you give them $600 a month or $100 a month. As long as you finish the tuition with the one semester, you're good to go. And that's what happened to me. Even flying. I fly, I come back, oh, I don't have money today for flying, you know, okay, let's save up, come on, let me work, let me do that. Go to professor's offices, start talking to them, telling them a story, getting from their experience. So I start the change at that point. That changed to happen. I went to Purdue University and guess what? I studied another master's degree. It's not on the same field, but it's, it's on the electrical and industrial engineering. It was dual master, it was dual, it was two majors. And then I was like, oh my God, why, why am I doing this? I just need to get to commercial pilot so I could go home and fly planes. And you know, the thing that I was dreaming flying with my buddy, right? So I went to school. I started, I graduated on, on June. I started in August, Purdue University. So all the life, going to school, getting homeworks. Well, do research, you know, a lot of work, but it's doable. I'm not, I cannot say there is anybody out there who's stupid. As long as you keep yourself busy, you will see the results. You will be satisfied. You will be satisfied with the results. So what happened, so what happened is uh, I started, I started my, 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 my Purdue school and then I go to, uh, during the spring breaks, during the fall breaks, I went to Florida, Miami and get my commercial license in 10 days because I was studying for my school, my major, and I was studying for my commercial stuff on piloting. September 23, <clears throat> on September 23, excuse me, in September 23rd, I got my commercial license. I came back to Purdue University. I was like, hey, Abe, you don't have to go to school anymore. You finished. You will be overqualified. You will be this and that. I had financial problems at that time too. Because you pay for a commercial license about $10,000. You were going to pay about the tuition for the school. I didn't have a scholarship. I slip. I wake up. Guess what? Boom. 
an email. One of the airlines back home. Boom, another email. Well, Purdue University, boom, another email that Abed, you deserve to get a scholarship. You are in Purdue University. And I was like, oh my gosh. I opened the website for the scholarship program. Guess what happened? I didn't give them any schedule, even of my classes. I did not give them the schedule of my classes, but I asked them the money. Hey, I'm doing graduate level studies. Uh, I bet you guys uh, need to pay me the laptop money, right? And the, the advisor said, well, I don't know you. I just saw your student ID number. You just got in. You, I was like, yes, yes, I need the money right now. <laughs> so he transferred the money to my account. And I, I, it was really happy moment. The power, the source, the things, the professional help that we get from the beliefs, the, the, the values, the, the things that you learn, ICU family, not just ICU, Purdue, every American, every Saudi friend, everyone. Sometimes you get people don't like you for no reason. I'm not people, but it's just, I suggest you guys turn this into your power. Well, if you ask me, well, of course, there are a lot of people don't like me, but if you don't like me, you know, that there's nothing I can do for you to like me. Well, don't like me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That means there is something that I need to do. Or there is something that I need to change inside myself or about myself. Believes. I believe. I believe that if you use your mind, keep the thing that you want in your heart, you will get to your point. I went back to Saudi Arabia after uh, first semester at Purdue, trying to apply for a job. They say, well, you are, uh, you know, your age is uh, above the age that we want by five, e five months. Like, okay, sir, well, you guys asking for high school. Well, I have a, you know, I, I took like, I have a Indiana State University degree, you know, it's, 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 it's a Bachelor of Science and Master degree, it's a Bachelor of Science. And, you know, I took operation management with Dr. Whoever. And then I took a safety and OSHA program with Dr. Moayed and, you know, and they goes like, oh, okay, we don't need that. You above the age by five months. We take your paperwork, we take your degrees, certificates, whatever, but we might not call you. I stayed 30 days, nobody called me, bam, went back to the United States. Continuing my Purdue stuff. I was like, okay. That's what I believe, like, you know, just don't stop. Every opportunity that you get, like, use it. Use every, anything, any chance that you get, use it to make yourself better. So I came back to Purdue University, you know, started studying, started getting like, oh my God, getting like not really stable in my education because I didn't need that. I was like, I'm just doing this degree for fun. I'm just, you know, I don't need it. I start calling my old professors at Indiana State University, start getting help. I said, hey, professor, this is what happened to me. I went back, you know, I got my commercial, you know, and they go like, well, I bet I, I said, just like you did a really good thing that you are at Purdue University right now, you know, trying to get more credits, more stuff. You might be a doctor one day. Well, guess what happened? I continued, I got the power again. Start sending out emails, even to professors who were not were my professors. They were in different department, but I knew them. Just, just for fun, just communicate, just get experience, get the help. I believe we are running at the time. So, hmm, this is my graduation at ISU. I don't know if Martha saw this before, but you guys, you know, I got the bachelor and the master flying ideas, the things my perspective these are the things that i was talking about so i'm going to start a video
I hope you guys enjoy it. This is one of the moments that, okay, you guys are ready. All right. Abed, please don't forget to share the sound, computer sound. The sound is good now? Yes. Oh my God. Okay, here it is. You still have to share the computer sound. Do you hear the sound? No. No. Okay. All right. You will hear it now. Students in the Wabash Valley have been waiting for it. The day they walk across that stage and become a graduate, Indiana State University held two commencement ceremonies today. Family, friends, and loved ones of college students packed the Holman Center to show their support. There was no shortage of energy as graduates walked down the aisle to take in the big day. We caught up with some graduates to hear their thoughts about what this day means to them. I'm just happy. I mean, I cannot explain my feeling right now. But um, I'm also like, I'm feeling a mixed feeling because um, I'm going to leave this school. I'm, I'm going to leave my friends, my teachers, and... and each one support me to get to this point. That's one of the memories, guys. That's one of the memories. Next, I went back to Saudi. Got the shock, I told you. Well, they said like, oh, five more, five months more than the age that required. Staying home, work on something, do something. I start sending emails out. I start working, sending emails to Saudi Airlines until they got accepted us as people who are, there is no age limited. Well, we worked on it. We don't want to run out of the time, but we'll give you about 30 minutes. Uh, in 2018, I graduated from Purdue University and, uh, you know, my niece made a video, which is, you know, something you would like. It's going to take about five minutes, then we'll go to your... You hear the voice?
Well, that's the end. It was long a little bit. Well, right now, this is now what I'm doing right now. You know, I got the graduation. I start working. Uh, I start uh, being a flight instructor. And all these people you see in the picture are my students. And I got more, more. These students are 2020, like right now, four months ago. Uh, some of them fly for uh, Southern China Airlines. And, you know, I've teached a lot more than 52 students some of them uh in their country flying for airlines uh cfi means certified flight instructor opt means uh, optical practical training and uh you know I, I start doing master in aviation administration but kind of it changed i changed my mind with the support of, of people very important people to me so I'm um, sorry, guys. Uh, so, uh, Master in Aviation Administration at Lewis University, and then I, uh, I applied for it, and then I went back, I did my CFII Certified Flight and Instrument Instructor, then Multi-Engine Instructor, and then I start working. I volunteered myself, you know, just to keep myself busy using the time, giving free classes over Zoom meetings for people who wants to be pilot, providing the help. And, uh, you know, whatever you got, you got to just get it out there. If you need to help yourself, get that thing out there and uh, try to help everybody because you're going to get the help and you need the help. That's what I learned from my, my, my you know, experience. Um, uh, you know, uh, so... Uh, so, you know, whatever you got, talent, help others. If you help others, things will be easy on your life. These, these people you see in the picture, every one of them has a story. So I had my story and you have your story. Every person uh, get a hardships, okay? So here, the planning, people around me, the people around me, I really thank them so much for the help my mom support my family and the staying keeping myself busy so i did a whip um, i don't know if you guys uh but i i had a, i did a website that will we'll open it later on this website is just uh for free studying for free help i people can contact me give them counseling give them advisories give them uh, some information about if they want to be pilots, if they want, you know, even taking them tours of flying, providing classes like online over Zoom with the COVID-19. So I kept myself really busy uh, providing like every day, two hours of my day, of my time with free, with no money. So just to help people, it's kind of, I had a financial problems. That's why I'm doing this. That's why I felt, I felt the, the, the place that I was in. So I don't need other people, guys, who dreaming to be pilots, who dreaming to be in, into aviation. Now, the planning is, guess what? Um, currently, I'm a flight instructor and also a candidate of a PhD. I'm doing a PhD in aviation science. And uh, and is in, I don't, I didn't want to say the name of, of the university, but it's in Florida Institute of Technology. And uh, guess what? The thing is, uh, I don't have a scholarship, right? But as long as you help people, you will get a lot of gifts, gifts from God. I might have the gift of a struggle all my life, like, you know, coming in a, to America and seeing every girl smiling to you and you think like, oh, they like me. But that's a, that's a sign of a struggling, the gift of a struggling that I had. So, you know, try to make the change to your life. Like to be, do not stop. You have to be, better get yourself get yourself into a situation man don't say like oh i'm a problem oh i have cancer let me stay no you gotta get up on your feet because a lot of people got cancer out there i tell you everyone got his own hardship everyone got his own problem but do not think of the problem it happened already you can't you can't just keep thinking about it and keep yourself low at your lowest point you just get up on your feet try to fight it if, if it's fight stronger, you're going to be stronger. Fight it back. Provide information. Help people. You will feel the energy and you will get the power with the people around you. 
you, it might be your girlfriend, it might be your boyfriend, it might be your mom, your dad, whoever in your family supporting you and giving you the support, get opportunity at that and provide the help to other people. You will, you will see the stuff that you will see what, what, it, what it is like about life. Well, you might, you might think, oh, I want to be an engineer. You might say, uh, engineer or doctor. I, I don't need anybody to call me a doctor. But what I'm saying is, you know, I'm, I'm, I was just thinking to make a change, not just in my country, not just for myself, well, for the whole world. And I believe that one day you will hear that, oh, I bet I met this guy in Zoom that happened in Power On series in Indiana State University 2021. But guess what? I make a plan for every single day in my life. I make plans every single day. I do not spend the day if I didn't get benefits from this day. Well, I don't want to spend the day just sleeping, you know, laying down. No, read, read anything. Get something. Work with, me, with your mind. Make your mind work. That's it. Don't make your mind lazy when you get a problem. Oh, I can't fix it. And then you start crying about it. Come on, man. Help yourself before people help you. Be independent. Learn. Grow. Well, oh, you fail a chick, right? You fail something. Well, okay. Okay. That's good. So what is going to happen? Your life finished? No. I saw this, man. I was in bed eating cheese and, and drinking water for eight months while you, you doing the steaks, right? Well, I did that. Well, I can't. If somebody smokes cigarettes, I smell them from like five miles, maybe. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying that. But not really five miles, but I smell it. Like you can't, like, you can't just imagine yourself that you stay at home. You can't be in contact with others. You want to go out, you might just touch somebody, get sick and come home and die. So the thing is, just find the solution for your problem. And believe me, it's out there. It's out there somewhere. I see myself like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my life. Well, you see a bed, you have a struggles, man. Oh my God, yes. But I'm happy with it. Because I believe that every problem, I have solution for it. Really strong belief. If I cannot do it like by myself, I get help. Get help. No worries. Call your professors, man. They, they taught you. They gave you something really important you might not feel by the time they are, they are giving you these things. Keep yourself busy. Learn. Grow. Well, don't say, well, I went to this class and get a C grade or get an F grade. Well, you got an F because there is a reason. You know this reason. So find the problem and fix the solution. Coronavirus came, or COVID-19, you know, fix us. You know, I start working, but I'm, 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 you know, start working, stay working, staying focused, keeping my Zoom classes going on, keeping myself busy, you know. I'm scared of getting sick until right now. Because I had a blood cancer, so if I go and catch this COVID-19, oh, this time I cannot fix the problem. I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes, fight. I was applying for the PhD. I got a support from a from, from, from friend, a person who is really, really important to me. Got the admission. Got ready. You know, I'm, 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 I'm really happy with it. That's why I'm saying I believe every person. Now, thank you, everybody. I will give you 30 minutes. Now, I said when I started, remember that just not because, you know, you talk longer than others. Well, you went to ISQ. It takes you five years to finish your bachelor degree. And it took me three years and a half. That means that I'm not better than you. That means we are on the same boat. But the problem is you were... You, you you are in the middle of the boat or in, in the back, but we are in the same boat. So, you know, if it's going to go down into the water, we guess what? We'll go down together. But I know how to swim. I get out my, I get myself out. So you better know how to swim too. Whatever you see in yourself, other religions, you know, people who motivate me. I got Denzel Washington. I got Will Smith. I got a lot of motivational videos that I watch myself. I watch them. 
if you feel if I feel like oh I'm not energetic today, I just go and watch one of their talking. When you look at these people, when you look at your professors, if you know them, I had a lot of converge conversations with my professors. If you know them, they're gonna say, well, oh, Doctor Abed, oh, we can call you Doctor now. We know that you're strong. I was like, well, prof, prof, you know, it's not really important to me. But they go like, okay. I go like, okay, doc, when, when this happened to you, what did you do? You learn from them. Like, bam, quick. Fix your problems. Don't underestimate yourself. Well, you're human. You got the strongest grace that you get. Like, the strongest thing we have on earth is the human mind. Well, we got a lights. We got air conditioning. We got a lot of stuff. Well, guess what? I have an iPhone. So could you think that, oh my God, in 2021, they got an iPhone. But in 1950, they don't have phones. So people created it. So you are really important to the world. Even if you do small things, like you are really important to the world. Think of it, okay? And... Uh, I, I, <clears throat> excuse me, and I will, you know, stop talking by saying that, hey, you got the gift, man, find it, be strong, you'll find a lot of people don't like you, say hi to them and keep smiling, and do whatever you gotta do, get the help, help others, that's the way, how you gonna grow up. And thank you so much for uh, Indiana State University. Thank you, Martha Reed, for, you know, reminding me of all the emotion moments that when she was talking on the graduation day. And thank you, Graham Lebari, for, uh, you know, giving me this opportunity to get back to, to, to my memories. I, uh, you know, you guys saw the video, right? I almost cried, you know, I cannot explain my feelings right now, but you know, it's a change right now because I'm still in a contact with these professors. So get the same thing. I hope you guys, uh, uh, I hope you guys, you know, understand a lot of things from the story that I'm, I was telling you. Uh, you know, there's always something Well, people saying that, oh, the sky is the limit, but guess what? Well, I don't have limit. I don't have limit. If the sky is the limit, I can go upper, I can go higher. If you go higher, I go higher, right? If you go, if you, if you go stronger, strong, I go strong. If you go loud, I go louder. That's my, 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 that's the thing that I see. That's my life. You say, well, the sky is the limit. Okay, well, I do not have limit. As long as I'm breathing, I can do a lot to help people and help myself. That's what it is. And now we'll give you the session of the questions and, uh, I'll take uh, questions and we'll talk about it. I just want to show you something. If uh, I will give the I will give the host to Dua and then we'll 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 show you my website. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Captain Abed. As I see, there are many of your friends and family came to support you, <laughs> and this is a gift. Well, thank That's you so much for the support. <laughs> I told you. Well, I, I got happy also. <laughs> over there you know looking and you know watching and listening is is really really good thing and thank you guys for the opportunity if you you know just take the session until i open my website and then i'll yeah. get the screen Be yes please all feel free to ask questions or uh, comment through uh, unmute and uh, or you can type in in the chat box all right guys every question like um Uh, but thank you for coming back to Indiana State. You are an inspiration to many. And I know many more people will see this video after we post it on our YouTube. And it will be shared around the College of Technology. But don't ever stop being an inspiration. And thank for being a survivor and being able to tell your story. It's very meaningful to a lot of people. So keep up your good work and know that Indiana State will always be family and home to you, and we're very proud of you. Thank you so much, Martha. Thank you for the nice words, and thank you for the warm words, like into a, into a, a person's heart, into 
uh, one person was, you know, out of the country from somewhere, part of the world. And guess what? This, the world is small. And really thank you for, for your world. Really. I really thank you. And I really appreciate it. Avid, can you check the chat box, please? There is a lot of the comments questions. and questions. Just uh, read the questions if, if you can. Okay. <laughs> I saw one question from uh, Khalid Sharif. Uh, he asked, uh, do we have uh, RNAV in the uh, 22nd? Okay, do we have uh, what? RNAV. This guy is a pilot and he is asking about pilot things. Well, I send you to Martha Reed and she's going to help you. <laughs> Aviation department at ITU. <laughs> okay, just uh, let me see. I can't see the question. I'm trying to open the website for them. So, uh, do we have R N A V in three, two, a bit? R NAV. That's that's a navigation system that P that pilots use to to land at the airport. They're using GPS. You do have RNAV on runway 32 at Indiana State University. Answering your question, Khalid. There another question is, did you know that you are the best ever? From Thank you so much. I do not think that I am the best because there are people out there, they got talents, they're, they're better. They're nicer, they're, they're smarter, they're, um, you know, I just, I just got the gift of the struggle and I'm trying, I'm trying to be the best. But I see myself the best of the best, that's how I see myself. But if you see me like that, well, I'm, I'm, I really appreciate it and thank you. Any questions guys, before we go? Questions, people. I'm trying to open my website. It's kind of hard. They got uh, no, Aziz, we didn't hear you. They don't have questions. Uh, Hello. Yes. yes. Uh, do you hear me now? Yes, we hear you. Yes, I uh, just wanted to say to Abid, uh, I'm uh, very proud of you, very, very proud of you. And uh, I hope to see your next uh, achievements, inshallah. Thank you so much. You will see. Just watch me. I tell you, every problem, you got a solution, right? You might Be find believe me, I keep watching you everywhere. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is Aziz Haider Habibi. Bye -bye. Thank you, thank you. This is one of the captains that, okay, was an inspiration. I was telling you guys, everyone got a problem. Everyone got a, got a hardship. Thank you, Captain Aziz, for the nice and warm words. Uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, I cannot explain my feelings right now, as I was saying. Can't explain my feelings. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Captain Abd. Allah wa al-afiyah. و يو ار والله وان اوف ذا بيرسون هو اولويز بوش اس يعني فورورد اند وي ار لوكينج فور ذا بيست اولويز فروم يو الله يعطيك الصحه ثانك يو ثانك يو سو ماتش كابتن ثانك يو براذر ثانك يو اي اي ريلي كان نوت يو نو كان نوت سي اني ثينج افتر يو وورز يو جايز ار ذا بيست يو جايز ار نايس ايفري وان جست ريمبر ذات هي يو جات the guts, you got the opportunity, you got the stuff to make yourself better. You got, you know, I always say that, hey, do not, you know, don't, don't let people know your plan. Just let them see the results and let the results talk. You don't have to tell any, anything, right? And thank you, man. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, uh, let me see. Um, I hope to have guys uh, time. Um, I have a small uh, words to all of you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for dua and also as well uh, for Captain Abid. Uh, I'm really proud of you, all of you guys. Uh, uh, really, my moment right now. You don't know, guys. What guys? What I, I don't know how to expose my feeling right now. Uh, I'm very happy for what I hear, and 
uh, I hope both of you do are all the guys in the host uh, and also as well Captain Abid you will lead the aviation industry uh, in your kingdom and around the world I'm proud of you guys we wish thank you uh, so much uh, many thanks many many thanks many thanks really deep from my heart uh, for uh, Indiana State University for hosting this meeting. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the curve, the big curve of learning for everybody. Thank you very much. My name is Captain Abdullah Sharif. Thank you, Captain Thank Abdullah you, Sharif. Captain. Captain Abdullah Sharif is one of the, you know, one of the motivational people that, you know, you take um, in your life, a person got uh, into aviation. So uh, thank you, Captain Abdullah, for the nice words and really thank you for your support. Uh, uh, Captain Abdullah Sharif is one of the old instructors in old generation and new generation. Uh, we, we, we learned a lot from him. Uh, we learned how you value yourself and how you're gonna value and treat people before even you become a pilot or before even we get some stuff uh, uh, related to uh, aviation. So thank you, Captain Abdullah, for for you know for saying these words. And you know, if I keep thanking you, uh, you know, I don't know what what I don't know what to say really. I I I cannot just you know explain my feelings, and I just I just want to say say thank you. Abid, salam alaikum. Salam. Jabr al Harbi ma'ak min Jidda. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much. I'm really proud of the people who are here. Well, yes, go ahead, Captain Jabir. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to attend this uh, seminar they had. It's a great pleasure to hear you talking. It's a great pleasure to, uh, to see you, at least. I'm so proud of you. I wish you all the best. You've done very well. Keep it up. Waiting for you to come back. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Captain Jabs, and all the people who were there for us in, in this industry. Thank you so much. Well, I, I did not talk too much about flying, but captains, all of you are like a picture on our minds. Like when you when we see you, like a picture on our minds, we would uh, I don't know, I don't know what to explain. But I really thank you from the heart, from the powers, from the stuff, from the passion that you guys had and have and still pushing us through the, the through life, pushing us, giving us more, more and more. Thank you so much, Captain Jabir. Thank you for, so much for coming. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, I'm really happy that you joined, you joined this meeting today. And we really thank you. And Captain Jabir, uh, he was one of the captains in Saudi Airlines. And, uh, you know, um, I believe that like, we were in one plane going, go going back to Saudi as, as, you know, student. And he was maybe the captain, but we didn't know and he didn't know. So I'm just, uh, I, I just re really want to thank you. Captain Abid, salam alaikum. Allah, 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 Allah. thank you. Okay, uh, any questions or are we ready? Because I want to actually show you something. Captain Abid, Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. I don't know who's talking. Habib, Akhuk Khalid Sharif. If you like describe your journey in, in instructing, what are you going to say? Well, basically, it's just, uh, you know, you learn from your boss, you learn from people who got experience and, you know, you transfer the knowledge and the experience that you learn to, to others and you just make sure you're doing the right thing. You know, some mistakes happens, but as long as you know the mistake, as long as you correct it, as long as you're not going again and again, that's, I don't, I don't believe, uh, I, I cannot call it a mistake. I can call it a lesson that you learned from. That's, that's what I see. That's the way I see it. Allah you the health and the We are so proud, Wallah, of you, Captain Abd. We are so proud of you, Captain Abd. We are so proud of you, Captain Abd.
Thank you Thank so you. much. Any questions? Well, uh, I don't know if Dora or Martha here. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Uh, well, this is the, the, the website that I was talking about. All right. This is the website that I was talking about. So, give me a minute. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Give me a minute just to show you the website here. This is the website that I was talking about. It's just uh, providing or getting you more info, information. You can find information about myself and you can find these are the, the rooms, the media rooms. And these are my friends and the services that I'm, I'm, I'm providing to people. Uh, this person, I know this person very well. I know the other person. Each one of them got a story, you know. Um, and I think um, I'm, I'm just trying to say, I'm, I'm just trying to say like you're going to be, if you are in a general or in, in aviation industry, you're gonna be the best pilot. So my website provide a lot of help for people for free. There is nothing that we ask about, there is no money. It's, it gives you a little bit about, about me that I got into aviation industry in 2016. I believe that, you know, um, I give a positive mindset that I'm creating partnership but with a purpose to provide the things for people this is this page talks about the value of a bear and all that if you see what i say is i don't say i am going to be succeed alone but i say let's success together in order to build up my country or uh, any country in order to be uh, you guys to be together you gotta work together you gotta clean up your hearts you gotta run uh to one goal so you will proceed to it so um, this is my academic, uh, like, for example, this is just my academic CV and professional backgrounds. Uh, star flight instructor in 2018, PhD in aviation currently. Right now, that's what I'm doing. Um, in 2020, during coronavirus, I started being a faculty and an instructor for talented students in Chicago in Project Promise. I had a, you know, uh, I, I, I was a drone instructor. I used to teach online. I had the Master of Science in Aviation Administration from Lewis University also in 2020 and uh, Master of Science in Dual, Master of Science in Electrical and Industri Industrial Engineering. And the thing is that what brings Indiana State University is the Master of Electronics and Computer Engineering from 2016 and the Bachelor of Science in 2015. Well, if you look here, I don't forget Mecca City, which is, you know, associate degree in electrical power. Uh, in electrical power, the, the, that power transfer me is not electrical, but power for a person. These colleagues, this picture, the services that I provide, all these guys right now, some of them in America right now, getting the training for the Airbus, some of them are flying for the airlines. So, and right here, uh, the past the past to success, I explained some one part 61, one for one, uh, for the new student, for the new people who, who wants to join um, aviation. And right here, I just, you know, I, I give you uh, a good approach of how you're gonna start studying before even thinking to start your aviation um, uh, education. And right here, the estimate and the prices is cost, how, is, how much is going to cost you and how, how are you gonna, you know, manage yourself in, in, into aviation because it's, it requires you to pay a lot of money. So um, also the aviation science, I, I'll give you the recommendation of universities. Uh, one of the universities is Indiana State University. They have a flight school, flight academy, and the other universities that I have been in contact with from 2016. Um, otherwise, you know, testimonials, this, these are my students, one, each one of my students. I only put the three pictures, but I had trained more than 52 students something right now and more coming. Um, these are just the examples, uh, you know, each one of them story. So if you guys, uh, you know, if you guys want to visit the website, this is the banana pilot. This guy, you know, um, I really like this guy right now. He's a 737 pilot, first officer. He's in Southern China Airline. His name is Frank. We start with struggling 
and, uh, and that's it. So also this guy, this is the first guy that I finished as a multi-engine instructor. I finished him in nine days. I'm proud of him right now flying the Airbus A320. And this is Khalid, he is talking. This is Terre Haute Airport. This is Holman Airport. This airport, Holman, but this is our airplane. And this is me and Khalid. If you want to contact me, you just drop your information over there and you will see me. If you need a chat, I, I provide a help freely. I don't ask cost. I don't ask anything. If I have the time, if I can, you know, help, I would provide the help free and I don't need anything from you guys unless you pursue your dream, unless uh, we make a change. So I was saying helping people to make the right move, but the world, the important thing is let's succeed together. So that's all. Questions, guys? Uh, we have from Ruru, I think. He I don't have uh, any question. I just want to say some words to my uncle. Um, sorry. I wish you lovely things that your dreams may come true and that you will always find reasons to smile with joy. I feel proud to have as you as an uncle and very lucky to have your presence in my life. You are a kind person, a strong man, and the best of uncles. Love you and wish you nothing but true happiness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is my niece. Well, uh, thank you so much. I, I, uh, uh, I don't know. Well, uh, guys, I, I'm speaking Arabic and English, but uh, I really thank you for the words. I really thank you for the love. Uh, and I was saying family is a very important family is number one. You got to give the love. You got to share the love to your family and the loved ones and your friends. So thank you so much for your roles. Thank you for whatever you're saying. Thank you for your feelings. And, you know, thank you. And if you, if you are saying I am the best, I believe that you are the best. That's what I believe. Thank you so much. Uh, also, there is a question from Abdullah Zahrani. Yes. Uh, what drive you to do more volunteer what drive me to do, what drive you to do more volunteering? Okay, well, nothing drives me to be more volunteer unless that we have, we have uh, limited, limited uh, information about the things I do. We have limited um, culture about aviation schools we have that's why i was saying i'm, I'm you know the aviation science phd I'm, I'm specialized in educational and training so uh you know whatever i love whatever i do i, I help whatever i help people i help with although i feel myself as as as, as independent person it's hard to get a help from others but i know the persons who are there you know to help i know everyone so that's what drives me i hope you know, I hope I answered your question. Anybody want to say anything or we're done? Are we done or we still have time, right? Yeah, you still have 30 minutes. Really? <laughs> I thought I, I've done. Okay, okay. We still have 30 minutes. So yeah. uh, I showed you the website. And if you uh, could uh, please... Uh, um, Type the link for the your website. And okay, I'll put the link for you guys. But I don't need phone calls, okay? If you call me, well, Indiana State University will mm -hmm. be a big problem. Okay, here's the website. We we'll put it in the chat for you. You guys can visit. You guys can drop off your questions, and you guys can get the help that you guys want. So thank you for the captains. Thank you, Captain Jabir. Thank you, Captain Abdullah Al Sharif, and uh, thank you. For people who inspires me and thank you for the all people who teach me uh, everything that that everything about life more than um, than just aviation stuff thank you for 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 whatever you did and, you know if i keep thanking you wallahi marhaba fi bhaggakum and thank you wal haja tani la baqulah hal ummi idha kanat tisma'ni ummi wallah hubbik wallah ashq din ummi ya sheikha wallah hubbik ummi so i'm speaking in arabic i'm just uh, you know, trying to say something to my mom, 
we say in Arabic, Ummi, uh, Ahubbik means I love you. Ummi, Wallah, Ahubbik, and um, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I, I hope just you got the feelings. And Nasi Hawalani, people who are helping me, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I know you know who you are, uh, people who are behind the scenes. I know, and Shaif, you know, Kidab, I know who you are, and you know who you are. But Shukran, Shukran, ala kul haja, Gadin Sawoha. Uh, and uh, I was saying to my mom, like, she's going to come this year. Uh, if COVID stuff went away, so I, I don't have to go back to Saudi Arabia. And that's all. Um, that's all I want to say. Thanks. Uh, I'm sorry for the disturbing. Uh, but uh, I hope uh, you give the mic a little bit for... Uh, the mother uh, of Captain Abid, just to to say anything in Arabic. I, I don't think I don't think yes, she's gonna sure. talk. My mom. My, she I just think, said I heard you. Yeah, so. she, she just said I hear you. So she just write 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 it down. But um, I don't think she's gonna be involved or like Captain Abdullah. But I I would love to. But she's gonna call me and okay, why you have behind you some stuff in there? Did you you know? Did you watch your teeth? Did you do that today? You know. A lot of mom stuff. Well, but but so Allah, I love you. Thank you for your support that you do. And thank you for everything you have done for us in our lives. And everyone, everyone has, uh, as I was saying, يعني, خلاص, uh, thank you so much. I'm, I'm looking at the what at the time here. It was three. I started at three. Now it's four forty one. I thought like, oh, we started at two. Now it's four. So that's why I couldn't get it. Uh, uh, I was just, you know, trying to pass out. Pass. So, uh, Ashan, um, sorry, uh, somebody wants to talk or? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, sir. How are you, Captain Abed? Thank you. How are you, everybody? Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Go ahead. Uh, at the beginning, I want, I would, I would like to thank everybody here. Also, I want to thank uh, Captain Abdullah Sharif too much. Uh, also, uh, you, Captain Abid, uh, because you are help uh, help us to learn uh, how how we how we how we uh, abide it in the future, inshallah. Uh, also, I want to thank every uh, everyone who participated in this meeting. Uh, and I have one question: uh, What are your future goals, sir? You have a question. What are your future goals? My future goal? Well, yeah. If I say my future goal, you will hate me. Sorry, sorry, Captain Abed. Also, well, I don't, I don't want to say. Captain Abed. Yes. Captain Abed. Captain yes. Abed. Yes. Also, I want to say uh, some words to your uh, mother. Okay. Shukran lak, shukran lak ya Abed. Shukran lak ala nak anti anti jiti wala zay al Captain Abed. Shukran lak wallah. Kullana fakhurin fiq. لأن الكابتن عابد جالس يساعدنا جالس يساعدنا جميعا والله يعمل جهد جبار معنا احنا مجموعة شباب ويخدمنا بشكل غير طبيعي فشكرا له شكرا كمان الكابتن عبد الله الشريف لأنه والله العظيم يعتبر والد للجميع شكرا لك يا كابتن عبد الله شكرا لك والله for for students from ICU and uh, you know for students from ICU uh, these are thanks words like you know he's just thanking my mom uh, you know uh, it's just in Arabic, so I'm just trying to, to explain that. And thank you, Ali, for, for your words. Really, thank you. And my mom says thank you, too. So I feel what she says, you know, uh, she, before even she say it. So she used to beat me up when I was young, when I was a kid, you know. She used to beat me up, like, a lot of things. Um, and uh, you guys, if you have questions, you can ask. No questions? People from ICU will get credits, right? Yes. Okay, well, uh, all the people from ICU, you guys got the credit today because you are attending. I guess it's windy outside. Uh, there is one person that I want to thank, really special thanks to that person. I don't want to say names, but hey, thank you. Thank you so much. I did, Sonia. I asked to unmute. Uh, okay, well, the time is up. The time is up. 
اوكي ايوه السلام عليكم عليكم السلام هلا يا مرحبا هلا حبيب كيفك طيب الحمد لله الحمد لله تمام الله يسعدك ان شاء الله يوفقك ان شاء الله يا رب حتى انا احبك اللهم امين يوفقك ان شاء الله جميل يا رب وي تشينج ان عربيك معليش يا امي حبيبي كيف ان شاء الله طيبه يا ربي كيف حالك يا خاله؟ طيبه الحمد لله كيف صحتك؟ والله احنا مره فخورين بابنك وانت يعني ربيتي واضح من تربيته يعني هو نموذج وفخر لكثير من الطلاب السعوديين الله يسعدك ويخليك كانت تجلدني كانت تجلدني امي الله امي كانت تجلدني بتوصيه الله يسعدك يا امي الجلد هذا الصراحه علمني كثير يس الجلد هذا كانت تجلدني ترى بتوصيله ما اخفي عليكم يعني فلا احد يسوي لكم فيها يعني اني واي حتكلم بالانجليزي عشان الناس اللي هنا I was saying that my mother used to beat me up okay when I was young I, I do a lot of mistakes and then she comes and beat me up so I run and go to the stairs and you know go out and do do some stuff I was I was really um, I don't know I'm not going to say stupid kid but I was really you know I cannot I bother a lot of people So that's why she beat me up. And thank you, my mother, and your love, and your esteem, and everything, my mother, and your love, and your heart. God bless you, and keep you in your life, and keep you in your life. Okay, you guys have questions. Any other questions? Comments? Okay, questions, comments. We got about, what, 14 minutes? Okay. Yeah. Questions, guys. Okay, if you don't have questions, well, right now, currently, I'm in Centralia, Illinois, uh, two hours away from Terre Haute, Indiana. Well, in Indiana, right now, it's uh, it's uh, three three o'clock, right? No, five. No, right? five, five. Yeah, five. So I I get confused uh, always. So uh, you know, it's it's really gusty. It's really windy. Gusty means the wind is 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 you know, and the ceiling, the clouds are low and. Yeah type of stuff so right now I'm, I'm just sitting in a front desk like on my on my job um i worked at a school uh, at a company called the uh, ergo flight school so um we got all the the students from different country so um you meet people who have uh, you meet people who have problems you meet people who have hardships as i was saying so whatever you get in your life man try to get over it how are you gonna get over it just work on it man do not say uh that you know you cannot do something believe in yourself do not underestimate yourself just do what you can do to fix the problem and to be to come over it um sometimes i don't see that uh, all of you guys are saying a lot of nice things about me a lot of things about me but really see myself sometimes like I haven't done anything that's what I'm uh, supposed to do that's what I'm you know that's what I'm here for and we all humans we all people trying you know to um, you know help each other trying to make a better world for us you know um, I don't know if I'm going to go back to Saudi Arabia and you see me in some place I don't know if I'm going to see you in a place but make sure whatever you go to Just try to do the work completely, complete your job, do your job, like do what you're supposed to do, do what you have to do. You will be the shining light in your job. You will be the shining light in your, um, in your measure, in your whatever you do, whatever, universities. Uh, if you think that I haven't been, um, you know, in a situation that you got a test, like really hard test, you're scared to get a C grade, I have been there, trust me. Trust me, if you got like, oh, I don't have many financial problems now. Well, I have been there, trust me. Um, I got the, gift of, got the gift of struggle right now. Sometimes I get, I stay like more than one month. I don't talk to my family because of, I don't want to get more emotional inside and connect him to my job. I don't need to connect these emotional. So just try, um, just try, you know, try to make yourself better, man. If you are away from your family, I mean, if you are away from your family, 
you know, the time that you spend away from your family, you got to use that time. It's a valued time, man. You got to use it. You got to you gotta become better. You came here for a reason or you went out of your country for a reason. Well, I don't want to say uh, something, but what I'm saying is just do your best, man. Stop being like, okay, just, just do your best. And that's it. And you will find yourself like you are processing. You are the process. The only thing you, you are waiting for is just the goal. When it comes to you, it's just, it's gonna make you happy and then boom, everything will go away. Okay, if it goes away, then what are you, what are you, what are you going to do? Well, as a human, as a person, as an educated person, you need to have your goals. Like for me, I really don't know. Well, I, I really don't know. Tomorrow, my goals are going to change. Like, I'm not saying I change from something to something, but what I'm saying is at least I have to do something. I have to create something like a list for myself. Well, 2021, I got to do a lot of things. I write them down and then I just, okay, if I don't want to write them down, I just think about them. If you're thinking about them, at least do two of them. By the end of the year, you reach your goal. Everyday goals. Maybe you see like, oh my God, why are you going to school like this? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why are you taking credits? Well, I have met people that we go like, oh, engineering together. And then they go like, why are you doing flying? And some of them will go like, oh, crazy. But I see myself in there. If you see yourself in, in whatever, you know, just do it. Do what makes you happy, man. Do what makes you happy. Don't let others tell you that you cannot do something. Don't let others tell you that, oh, it takes you longer. It takes you five years to get your bachelor degree or it takes you three years to get a master's degree. Well, I was saying that just, just not just because you take longer, maybe the hardship that they got is different than yours. It's easier, right? You see it as easier, but it's hard on them. So deal with your own stuff, um, get the help you want, study, work. You wanna make a change? Man, be the shining star, man. I'm telling you, that's what I tell you. Like, be the shining star. Don't be normal. Don't be normal. So I remember Denzel Washington said that he, he 30 years before he applied as an actor, he went to a, you know theater, and that theater, guess what? They kick him out. They said, "Hey, you cannot, you cannot sing. We don't need actors that cannot sing." But right now, he uh, in 2018, I, I believe he he produced like a, one movie, and that movie took the Oscar or whatever. And at the same theater that happens, at the same theater that you know um, kicked him out 30 years ago. So if it was you, I was like, okay, if it was you, you're going to say, oh my God, I'm not going back to those people. So, well, today you fail, tomorrow you're going to pass. And then, but if you keep failing and then you go like, oh my God, I'm at lo my lowest point. I cannot do that. I cannot do this. I cannot continue. Then you will tell your brain that you cannot do something. I'd, I think you're going to make your brain disabled. I think you're gonna, if you keep telling yourself not a non-positive words, keep yourself positive, stay positive, man. Well, I cannot help you. I'm just talking right here. I'm telling you what, what the things that I have been through and you might go through them. You might have more harder hardship than me. So stay focused in your life. Try to make yourself better always. I, I don't know. Well, some of you will think, well, the financial stuff are, pro are, are the best thing. Like maybe your mind is financially something, you know, but don't underestimate yourself, man. Whatever. Think about the things that you need. Do them. Be happy with the gifts that you got from God. Well, there are some stuff that I say. There are some stuff that I cannot talk about. But I'm sure you guys have the feeling that oh okay, well I bet you got you got the strong you got the you got these hardships and how you gonna win through them. Well hey, I'm telling you man, hey, get, get whatever you want, get you what you want. You want you need something, go out there, go fight, get it done.
don't stay home and say, well, hey, I need Lamborghini. Well, I tell you what, you need Lamborghini and you staying home, how are you going to get it? I'm not saying go out there and work and get millions. Well, some people maybe create apps. Some people, you know, it's just opportunity. They, they use their minds. They, they use the best shot in, in the life. You might, you, well, you might get married, you are 19. You might get married, you are 45. You never know. And, and you know, that's, that's the thing. I, I, you know, that, hey, just keep yourself constant, man. Do whatever, do what makes you happy. And not just because it takes you longer, that means, you know, you're gonna fail, okay? Keep up what you're doing and, you know, keep your head up. Be proud of yourself. Do not underestimate yourself. Think more, do more. Think, then do. Then take an action. You don't have to, you know, uh, start talking and talking and talking. Well, let the results talk, man. You don't have to say anything. Let the results talk. You might have to work a lot. You might have to work a lot, but people, I'm not saying people would not love you. Well, whoever likes you, he likes you. Who doesn't like you, well, he's not going to like you anyway. So why are you thinking about that? Don't think about others. Stay focused. Um, stay within your measure. Study hard. Uh, if you're doing flying, fly and go to school, do your homework, ask your professors, man, get help from others, get, uh, learn from, from, from old people, from old people who are before you in that uh, place. And that's it. Well, uh, we got about four minutes. That's God. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you, Indiana State University for uh, hosting me and, you know, nominating me as a, one of the motivational speakers. I hope my story inspires a lot of people around uh, ICU students and ICU professors and also the captains uh, or everyone here. Also my mama, thank you mom for speaking out. <laughs> and uh, you know, um, and people who are around me, people who are supporting me. And thank you captain for, for supporting me, giving me the ideas of you know, continuing the education, helping me like sometimes every night, you send me emails, you help, you know, I, I really thank you so much. So, and I would say at the end, hey, go out there, get whatever you want, man. Thank you, Captain Abid. It's our pleasure having you today. And thank you for sharing your unique experience. You are we are so proud of you and uh, you are really one of the inspired and role model in, uh, from Saudi Arabia. So thank you so much and uh, thank you all for joining us. Have a great day. And for the people who are in Saudi Arabia, good night. <laughs> I know it's very late now. So thank you for joining us. And uh, please, I think there is... There are some questions. I don't believe there are some questions. Well, I think there is a question from Khalid Sharif. Is it gusting there in your place? Is it gusting there? Gust means that the wind is very strong. No, it's not. Take an airplane from Indiana State University, take Sycamore 6 and go up there and fly. Hey, uh, it's really windy. We got a low level wind shear and we got a lot of things. So thank you, Khalid. And thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Mama, for attending. And thank you, uh, all the captains. Thank you, uh, uh, Captain Abdullah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the nice words. Thank you for listening to me and giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Martha Reed, for reminds me, reminding me all these things. And I, I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully, we'll see you soon in Indiana State University. And uh, hey, go out there, get whatever you want. Gusty, wind. Windy, oh, winds make you strong, okay? And we show you Bye bye. All right, bye guys. See you later.